Good morning. Uh, so thank you so much for coming uh, for this early morning se session. Uh, I'm Jun Ro. Uh, I'm a, an assistant professor of marketing in the Freeman Business School uh, at Tulane University. I don't know how many of you expected to hear a talk from like a marketing guy, but uh, so uh, it's my first time uh, coming to Pi Texas, and I want to thank uh, organizers for giving me the opportunity to present this. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Python uh, and org mode for fluent output generation of scientific research. So how many of you use like Emacs for your development? Oh, how many use like uh, org mode? Oh, good, good. So uh, <clears throat> basically the org mode is a major mode for like many outlines uh, for Emacs, but it has like a lot of uh, functionalities which facilitates a uh, bunch of different things, but uh, today I'm gonna focus on the output generation, uh, how, how you can use uh, this functionality to like uh, generate outputs fluently. So I'm gonna introduce org mode a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you some examples, you know, how uh, you can use it to, uh, to uh, be more productive, basically. So first, the motivation. Uh, so so basically generating like output, any kind of output, like texts, plots, and tables is like essential part of any kind of research, especially for scientific research. So the, usually, you know, once you get everything done, you have data for your like plots and tables and everything, then, you know, your uh, typical like code for generating these kind of things uh, tend to be like small. You have like small scripts to generate like plots and everything. But the problem is you have like bunch of them, like 20, like 10 to 20 of them for each paper. So, and another thing is sometimes or often you have to update these things uh, multiple times uh, over the course of a project. So, you know, in my field, it takes like several months to get the review back from a journal. So, you know, they ask you to do some new things or update these stuff. And the problem is I'm sure you already have these experiences, but you know, you cannot Basically, you don't really know what's going on with your own code because you haven't seen it for like two months or so, right? So that's uh, kind of like a motivating uh, uh, context. And so when you update your outputs, you have to uh, complete these steps. So typically, first you have to find the files, right? So you have a bunch of files. Uh, and then if you find the file, then you actually have to find the actual specific code blocks uh, in that file to uh, generate these uh, stuff, and then you have to like, you know, figure it out in terms of like, you know, what did I do to, uh, to know where to edit those code, and then finally you have to run the code to update this plus. Right? <clears throat> so challenges, so challenges are, uh, to me especially, I usually end up with like a bunch of files, so I didn't want, I usually don't like uh, have a long file for everything, so I tend to like generate separate files for separate like tables and stuff. Then you have like this like whole folder with bunch of like either Python files or like IPython files. And then uh, it becomes like challenging to actually like figure it out which file does the thing that you want to do. <clears throat> so also, you know, if you put everything in, uh, together into a long script, then actually navigation uh, within one file becomes challenging because you have like thousands of code. Uh, relearning is not easy because uh, usually you don't annotate your code that, uh, that well. And sometimes you have to edit non-Python code as well. So you want to sometimes use like LaTeX table and you know, because my table body, I don't want to do it like uh, manually. So I use like Python code to generate the rows for each tables. But for the header and footer, I just use LaTeX. So you kind of have this kind of like uh, multiple languages uh, going on. And all these things like cause non-fluency in your workflow just basically add like this psychological overhead in your workflow, you know, in order to do, do this, I have to like figure these things out which are not necessarily like important. So based, and <clears throat> another alternative is the I, uh, really good IPython notebook. So I use it a lot and uh, it's, so it's much better in like block executing code, you know, you can just easily uh, execute like code blocks. And also, you know, annotation of code is very nice and easy and everything. But I found actually IPython notebook, notebook still uh, has this overhead because uh, you have to run the kernel first. Uh, 
uh, through like inspect. I mean, you can use the notebook viewer, but uh, in your own code, you usually have to run the kernel to inspect the notebook. And then you have to, know, again, like navigate through your directories. If you have multiple files, same thing happens. And if you have like long file, then actually the navigation becomes clunky as well. So basically the motivation for this is that like uh, reducing overhead and minimizing this uh, non-fluency in your workflow using this old mode. So instead of like work, actually working, I tend to like spend a lot of time like making me more productive. So, but uh, so this is one of those things. <clears throat> so let me quickly introduce org mode. Oh, so I only have like eight minutes. Okay, let's go quickly. So it's a, a major mode again in Emacs for keeping notes, uh, maintaining to-do list, planning projects, and everything. And it's cross-platform, uh, convenient, flexible markup syntax for hierarchical documents. So that's uh, important. So instead of talking about this, let me. Uh, talk about one thing and then go to the examples. So I, the reason why I love Python is that uh, it's kind of scalable in terms of task. So because you know it's general language, so you can use Python for everything. And it's org mode is like that, but, but for like text management. So you can use org mode for basically everything uh, related to text. And advantages are you can have one hierarchical org file for everything and you can put heterogeneous contents like to-do list, code, results, and paper, and it's very good at navigating, annotating, and locating scripts. So let me go to the example first. Uh, so, yes, sure. Uh, I actually, like this, hopefully this, is this better? Yes. Or still? Uh, maybe I can do it a little more. So this is just a simple uh, org file uh, that I got uh, generated for this talk. So basically, it's a hierarchical document. So you have these like headlines. So this is like this one starting example subtree. This is a heading, and one heading can you can first like expand and collapse the heading with tab key, so it's very easy. So even if you have like long stuff, uh, once it, everything is collapsed, it's very easy to look at and nice to like navigate around. And you know, a uh, subtree uh, can have multiple, uh, a, a heading, headline can have multiple subheadings, so you know, it's a hierarchical again, so you can have like different subheadings for each one. And navigation is very easy, again, uh, because you can collapse and expand trees uh, easily. And there they have like multiple key bindings where you can like quickly move around uh, across different headings. And you can you know, edit the structure easily, like if I want to move this heading up and down. You know, it's just a matter of like a couple of keystrokes. And then uh, important thing is you can have code blocks uh, inside uh, a body uh, inside the body of a uh, subtree. So basically, this begin uh, source uh, Python. That means you know I'm going to start the Python code, and then end source uh, means like Python code is done. Right? <clears throat> so this thing doesn't do anything, uh, but uh, I just want to show that how the code thing is work. And then you can have uh, code blocks again, uh, but. The previous example was kind of easy, but this one is a little bit more involved, where a code block can have that different like uh, headings. So you can have names, so you can identify the specific code block, and you can you can have like a lot of like headers, where like you can even uh, pass like data to the code inside of this uh, code block. So I'm saying that this print this variable has uh, this string, and if I run this code block. Then I got I get this results and it's printing out this org mode code block example output string that I passed uh, via the heading. <clears throat> so not only like you can uh, be like flexible about this, but you can actually run this code inside the org mode. So basically, running code block is like really easy. You don't even have to fire up any Python or anything. You just uh, press a couple of keystrokes and then it's gonna uh, run it for you, right? <clears throat> 
then you can have uh, like LaTeX code blocks, of course. So you know, begin source LaTeX, and then so I've got heading, header, and footer over here. So what I want to do is I want to have like the header LaTeX, footer LaTeX, and then I generate the body with Python. Right? <clears throat> so I already executed the code blocks, but also I kind of want to talk about this tangling thing. So tangle means you export these source codes, uh, you extract these source code only from your org file. So let's say you have a bunch of like uh, descriptions in text and then code blocks, and then if you tangle the org file, then it's gonna only grab the co source code and export it to a, a, a external file. So if I do this, so if I uh, export this file, so I specify like tango and the location of this code, then if I go to the file, this, where is this, where is this? Oh, sorry. And uh, the source code file is generated uh, with uh, uh, the contents. And then if I go like this, and this is where like kind of like nice thing happens. So basically, org mode provides you like with uh, literate programming capabilities. So you can specify names for each code blocks and then weave them together uh, by specifying their names in like this uh, brackets. And also, so basically I'm saying, I wanna put code header here, footer here, but in between, uh, if you uh, put this argument parenthesis here, then it's, instead of the source code itself, it's gonna actually export, run the code, and it's gonna export the results of the code to the file. So, so let me show you the example. So again, this is the source code, print, print this, these kind of things. But if I uh, tangle this code block, it's gonna ask me you know, if I want to actually run this. <clears throat> then I got this new uh, example output.txt file. So if I open, uh, if I open this, then I have this LaTeX foot header, and then the results of the code run, and then LaTeX footer that I specified. So you can have like very flexible, you know, you can either generate everything in Python, but if you want to do these kind of things, it's, it's easy in old mode. And, <clears throat> okay, so uh, let me just go to the actual example. So those are like a really quick uh, example of small subset of what uh, org mode can do. So it has a lot of functionalities, so there's like no way you can talk about everything uh, in this short talk. But this is more like a real like example that I use. So you know, in this table, uh, I'm gonna, again, it's the same thing, right? So table header I'm gonna export, and then I'm gonna run the Python code to generate the body, and then I'm gonna use the table footer here. So the header is uh, more involved, like LaTeX code. I mean, there are like automatic uh, packages which generates LaTeX tables like automatically, but I wanna be fancy, so you know, I spe want to specify everything manually. So I have like, you know, like aligning columns uh, uh, based on like decimal points, those kind of things going on. And then body, so I, you know, this is a little bit more involved, but still using like fake data. So using like pandas, I generate like 10 different uh, uh, like time series and calculate their like uh, summary statistics in this code, right? <clears throat> so let's just delete this. So if I run this, It's gonna generate uh, the, the, the body of the table uh, in the old mode. So you can kind of check. You know, so it's gonna write the stuff inside the old mode if you just run it. But let me just export this whole thing. It's gonna ask me if I want to run this, yes. Then it's gonna uh, generate this example table.txt file, which has this uh, LaTeX uh, header and then Python generated data and then later, later footer, right? So, 
one thing I usually do is, so it's, it's depending on you. So with org mode, you can actually write the whole paper inside the org mode as well. But in this example, I'm just using like leaks uh, to write the paper. But for the tables, I'm just including the tables that is generated by this org mode, right? So again, uh, this is already showing me the, exam, uh, the, the preview. So let me compile this. <clears throat> then you get you know, this kind of table easily. And if you change your like, you know, stuff, then you just run this code again and then compile the LaTeX and you get the updated table. So you don't have to, you know, it's pretty nice. Uh, so I found actually this uh, really uh, helped me uh, in terms of like uh, boosting my productivity. I don't really, uh, it, I don't have to worry about those like uh, uh, not important things anymore and uh, that makes like work more like enjoyable and everything. So I already show you all the examples. So the conclusion, uh, I, uh, it was like really brief, but with org mode you can minimize overhead in your output generation. So the big thing is you can put everything about a project in one file. I think that's like the most important thing for me, so I don't have to look around and everything. And each navigation of the trees, good annotation capability, you can execute source code really easily. And lastly, you can export your source code or resource uh, very easily as well. But again, uh, it comes with challenges, of course. Uh, so you have to learn Emacs and org mode. Uh, it took me, I mean, I didn't actually like running org mode, but it took me like uh, quite a few time to become like uh, familiar with it. So if you are like familiar with BIM, then I highly recommend this evil mode, uh, which provides like BIM keystroke in Emacs. It's really good, you know. I have been using it a lot. And then uh, there's a really nice project called uh, Space Emacs, which basically like have everything like built in. So if you just install this, then you get like very modern looking Emacs uh, with evil mode and everything uh, already built in. So uh, that's uh, the end of my talk. Uh, any questions? What are your questions? Yes. Yeah, so that would be good, but the challenge would be, you know, like if the counterpart is using old mode or like, you know, yes. yeah, that's usually the, even like uh, LaTeX, some people do not use it, you know, so it's already challenging, so. I see. Yeah, I, I believe so. I haven't yeah, used it much, but yeah, I believe so, yeah. Oh, I, I'm gonna upload it. Sorry, I was working on the last night, so I didn't. Yeah, but I'm gonna upload it. Let them know. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much.